Hi, this is just a quick little video from me um, about a step that's involved quite often when we find ourselves converting papers from Microsoft Word format into LaTeX. There are other videos, other uh, resources where I can explain more about LaTeX um, and specifically BibTeX. What I want to focus on today is, in fact, this BibTeX aspect of the conversion of a document from the Word file format into LaTeX. It's a pretty tedious step. It's not complicated per se. It just can take a little time. And I've got a few tricks to share with you that will explain this process. The basic idea here is that we have to manually convert the entries we find in the original Word document into the equivalent, what are called site commands in the BibTeX format within our LaTeX file. There are lots of other BibTeX support aspects that are good to be aware of. Uh, the Ski Institute has an extensive library of BibTeX files that we maintain and keep um, an explanation of on our website, a repository of on our GitHub site, and then links to a second repository that's linked to the GitHub that lives on Overleaf. And so if you're writing in either your own local document domain or via Overleaf in a more collaborative manner, then you can definitely link in the files that are part of the SCI repository, and then those are kept up to date. You get the newest versions uh, whenever you need them. And of course, you can contribute changes to those and even add your own file uh, to that repository. So for more details, let's jump over to the computer and have a look at the steps involved in taking our Word document and replacing the citations in it with equivalent cite commands in BibTeX. Of course, the very first step before we start to insert references from our Word file into our LaTeX document is to have a BibTeX file to start with. For that, we typically have uh, a file in another format, very often EndNote, which is a very common program for maintaining a database of citations and references. And so we need to convert that file into the BibTeX format. Uh, the steps for this are described pretty clearly, I hope, in this website you see above you here. And so the output of that process after some cleaning and some various steps that I can explain in more detail looks something like this. This is the first two references in a new database, a new BibTeX file I've created for Ashley Morgan's citations for this particular paper. And you can see they look like what you should expect for BibTeX files, the various uh, keywords, that's one of the most important things, and then the other elements of title and page number and volume of the journal and all that regular, uh, all those regular pieces that you expect to see. One of the pieces that's especially important to note here are the keywords. That's the very first entry, in this case after the at article a command or placeholder. They begin with AEM, which is our SCI convention for a database of BibTeX files that belongs to Ashley E. Morgan. And so all the keys that you'll see in this paper that come from Ashley's database will begin with that same prefix. The second part of the key is always the first three letters of the first author's last name and then the year in which that paper came out. And this is an important convention that will make it faster for us when we go to enter those keys into the document. Now, of course, we have to tell Overleaf where to find the bibliography file. And so I've added it just like another file. It's called aem.bib. You can see it on the left side of this Overleaf screen in the folder called bib files. Now, on the right-hand side of the same screen, you can see that I've added the necessary bibliography commands to the main LaTeX document with a specific pointer to the aem.bib file among the lists of other valid bib files that we'll use for this particular paper. Okay, so now it's time to jump back to the Word document. This is where we have to do the really manual hooking up of references. So here's the title page from our paper. And now we look at the introduction section for the paper. And as we scroll down to the bottom of the introduction, we'll see there's some references there, references one through four. 
And now we have to find the equivalent place in our overleaf document or LaTeX document and do the necessary steps to make that same set of references appear as they should as 1 to 4. And now if we look at the bibliography section of the Word document, we find the references 1 through 4. So now we go back to our overleaf document and insert the equivalent site commands. And here you can see I'm typing site and Overleaf is smart enough to look for the references. So it's doing a real-time search and match as I am typing. And this is where it's really handy to know what the keys are because we can search for these keys intelligently. Now you may have noticed that there was something weird going on or magic going on in the Overleaf document. And what I did is I went back to these original references and noted the names of the authors. The first author's last name in the first reference is PRI. And so as I type AEM colon PRI, Evernote looks for me and finds PRI 2019, which is the reference I'm actually looking for. And then I can continue and look at the second reference. First author's name there begins with SUB, and it's a 2017 reference. So I can keep typing, and then when I get the reference of choice, I can hit space, control space, tab to, to fill in these references as I march, march through this first four references that I'm trying to replace. So here you can see I've put the last reference in, and just to keep uh, a reference, a pointer to what I actually did, I'll put a percent in front of the 1-4 to mark it as a comment. Now I'm good to go. So now if we go back to the Overleaf document, recompile it, press the Recompile button, and then look at that same introductory section, we see that indeed the references that used to be there as 1-4 are there again inside square brackets. Now we can do all sorts of other clever tricks to format these references, do them as superscripts, uh, put a hyphen between them to make them look just like in the original Word document. And I'll come back to that in a later episode. Finally, I'll point you at this web page that's part of my website um, that in really is the starting point for using BibTeX and LaTeX together, it has all kinds of pointers and tips, uh, all the material I've described today, except maybe for the overleaf parts are shown or linked to this website. So please go there for references. And of course, get back to me with questions. I'm happy to answer them so that you too can enjoy the pleasure and efficiency of using LaTeX with BibTeX to write all your documents. Bye for now.